Human ambition is an amazing thing. We are driven to build upon our discoveries, to understand the nature of the universe, to solve deep and complex problems that come from life, or just to make things a little bit easier for the next generation. The same concept has driven us to our darkest depths, as the ever-increasing arms race involved in global warfare created advances we had only glimpsed in our nightmares. It's what we do! It's ingrained in us. We all dream of changing the world, and we all do in a way, but few chemists have had such a drastic change on how we live today as Fritz Haber. Born in the now dissolved Prussia to a Jewish family, the young Fritz's father was a prominent merchant with his own business in paints, dyes, and pharmaceuticals. When he entered schooling, he made sure to distance himself from his religion, considering himself more as a German than Jewish. In 1889, Fritz had to leave school for a year of legally required voluntary service to the 6th Field Artillery Regiment, but came back to finish his education and work with his father. Apparently, it did not go well, because his father pawned him off to a number of different apprenticeships at chemical manufacturers where he learned he had so much more to learn about the technical processes involved therein. So Fritz petitions his father to study a semester at the Polytechnic College in Zurich, and when he returns, he again tries to work with his father, but they butt heads, again, and resolved that they are incompatible as co-workers. Fritz then worked for a number of universities, teaching and experimenting, but during his time at the University of Karlsruhe, he and his assistant Robert Le Rosenal invented something that would change the world as we know it. And this is the Haber-Bosch process. The Haber-Bosch process is the catalytic formulation of ammonia using hydrogen and nitrogen from our atmosphere. That's it! Well, that and a bunch of temperature and pressure. But this idea came about because of the La Chatelier principle, which states that when a system is in equilibrium and something changes, the system responds by minimizing the effect of that change. A simple yet complicated idea led to a discovery of many other reactions. Le Chalier himself tried to attempt making ammonia from hydrogen and atmospheric nitrogen, but abandoned it after an oxygen intake explosion almost killed the technician. Yikes. So Fritz Haber takes over from where Le Chatelier left off and reaps the benefits as the Haber-Bosch process produces enough readily available ammonia for fertilizer that Chile, and I'm not talking about chilies, the land of the baby rack ribs and delicious appetizers, had the cost of sodium nitrate, a popular fertilizer ingredient at that time, cut by more than half, shaking up the world economy. We now produce more than 100 million tons of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, and half of that comes from the Haber-Bosch process, feeding half of the world's population. Crazy. Haber then, of course, receives the 1918 Nobel Prize in Chemistry and says, as he accepts the award, it may be that this solution is not the final one. Nitrogen bacteria teaches us that nature, with her sophisticated forms of chemistry of living matter, still understands and utilizes methods which we do not yet know how to imitate. But it turns out while Fritz was helping feed the world, he was also working on the darkest, most upsetting aspects of chemistry. Chemical warfare. World War I began, and as a German citizen, Fritz was eager to help on the war front, and he did what he did best. Developing the deadly chlorine gas, which renders your, your lungs into useless, fluid-filled sacs and other nightmarish chemicals, he was promoted to the head of chemistry in the Ministry of War, and was able to study the effects of poison gas on human beings so extensively that he was able to coin a new mathematical truth, called Haber's Rule, based on how much poison a human ingests over time. Good for you! The institute that Fritz worked for would later go on to make Zyklon A. And something tells me the B guys got a lot of help from the A guys just to make things worse. But Fritz would defend the use of chemical weapons, saying that it was no different than the invention of the gun over the sword. But the world has seen the effects of people coming home, permanently injured from their time in the trenches, and changes had to be made. The Geneva Protocol banned the use of chemical warfare in war, though, to Fritz's credit, the chemical arms race never really stopped and advances still today. 
Fritz's home life was heavily affected by his work in the war. His wife, Clara Immerwar, a noted German chemist, was also a woman's rights activist and a pacifist, called his work corrupt and perverse. She was so upset about it, she committed suicide, shooting herself in the heart. The morning after her death, Haber left for the first gas attack against the Russians on the Eastern Front. His eldest son committed suicide after escaping France during World War II, and their daughter, Claire, a chemist, committed suicide when she was told her search for the antidote to chlorine gas was being stopped for research on the atomic bomb. Haber continued to work on the development of chemical weapons until the onset of World War II, when the anti-Jewish sentiment had grown such that Fritz's workplace was being targeted. Although he had renounced his Judaism for Christianity, he and all the Jewish scientists were forced to resign. Fritz escaped the country to England, where he was not well received. Ernest Rutherford, the father of nuclear physics, refused to shake hands with him, which in England is the equivalent of drop kicking someone to the genitals. He was offered a pitted position in the Saif Research Institute, which he accepted, but along the way he up and died. So that concludes our lesson on Fritz Haber. Do you think his contribution to science and chemistry helped or hurt the world in the long run? Or would you be like Haber and say, it doesn't matter, I'm in the history books and I got oodles of money, so nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Either way, Haber changed the world as we know it. This has been Molecularly Crystal. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe and leave your comments below if you have any ideas or questions you want answered. See you next time.